Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we have part 2 of Weighing Brilliant Stars and what that entails. Another weighing video you ask? Yes, this is a shorter video, but this time we're going to be reverse engineering how the weighing process works and explaining why weighing a booster pop box is possible. So let's dive right into it. So the first thing we want to talk about is how much does each card type weigh? And th the main culprit for being weighable is due to these code cards. So let's take a look. So the code card, white code cards are 1.6 grams on average. The black code card for Brilliant Stars is again 1.24 to 1.25 or in this case 1.23 but the average is 1.24 and the main culprit of uh, this weighing process is the difference between these two they are if you take the difference 0.35 that's the main problem with the set moving on we take a look at the weight of the, a regular non-foil card it is 1.81 to 1.82 to 1.83. The average is really 1.82, something like that. That is just a regular non-foil card. Remember, this is important. Non-foil. 1.8-ish. Moving on to the difference between a hollow versus non-hollow. This is a hollow card. A hollow card weighs... 0.1 gram more than a non-foil. This is a hollow. It weighs 1.94, 1.95 roughly. Just to give you another example, foil cards are generally heavier than non-foil. Oh, there's two cards in here. So that's your hollow card. Moving on, V, ultra rare V cards. They are consistently two grams. That means they are 0.15 grams heavier than your non-foil cards. Again, that is important. Ultra rare Vs are two grams. Moving on, energy. Energy cards, you can expect them to be the same weight as a non-foil, which is 1.83. There's no difference between energy cards and non-foil cards, so we can lump them together. Uh, we keep moving on to the reverse. Reverse hollows. 1.96 or 1.95 basically. So a reverse hollow and a hollow rare weigh the same thing. There is no fundamental difference. Moving onwards, we have full arts. Full arts are also 1.95 to 1.96. They also weigh the same as a hollow rare. Again, not too much of a difference. But moving on to the V stars, which are new to the set. V stars are 1.99, and they're closer to a ultra rare V than they are to a regular hollow. But once again, there are some discrepancies, but 1.97, 1.99, can take an average. They are 1.98 on average. And finally, we have textured cards. Textured cards from the Trainer Gallery, which is also the same as a alternate art, is 1.97, which is Coincidentally, the same as the, the VMAX textured card, which is 1.98, 1.97, close enough. And finally, the card that's the heaviest out of all of them, which is the Trainer Gallery uh, Smooth Texture without a texture. These cards are what I call smooth because there's no texture on them. It's just a, it's a straight shine. So it's like a v ultra rare v without texture but for some reason these weigh 0 0.05 grams more than the ultra rare v and this is important v 
these cards are the main reason why the heaviest packs contain these types. And these types of cards are rather common for the most part. Oh yeah, two more variables to account for. So the new V-Star marker cards, they also weigh the same as the energy and non-hollow cards. So fundamentally, there is no difference. These markers are 1.83, which is basically the same weight as a non-foil and a regular energy card. So any, any of those are replacing the energies, there's basically no difference. Moving on to the, the wrappers. So mine have the same weights for all of them. It's 0.73 grams. The wrappers are pretty consistent. For the most part. So typically you have five common cards in a pack. You have one energy and three uncommon cards. So this establishes five plus four, which is nine cards as your baseline. So your baseline pack is this amount. Remember, you're going to have at the bare minimum, this is your constant. So you will have nine cards that weigh this much. Now, depending on the rest of the contents of your pack, that's how you would adjust for the differences. So when you add the wrapper on top of it, this is your baseline with the wrapper. Now, depending on the type of card you have, let's go through all the variables. You can have a hollow rare. When you have a hollow rare, you typically have, you always have a black bordered code card. So you add that. So what are your different variations? You can contain one, a reverse hollow in the pack along with your hollow rare. And this becomes 22.32, a light pack. the light pack but what if you have a trainer gallery card 22.42 it is still a light pack because it's under 22.5 so again light packs is where you want to, to be and let's say you had a textured trainer gallery card how much it would weigh it will still be 22.36 which is again a light pack so regardless of the fact no matter what you always want to open a light pack because all three variations reverse trainer gallery uh, smooth trainer gallery textured will always still remain a light pack now what would happen if you had a ultra rare v the, the pack will become slightly heavier because the ultra rare v is heavier and if we add again the reverse hollow variation to this it becomes 22.42 if you add this one now it will become a mid-range pack 22.51 because again the trainer gallery card the smooth versions are heavier and they skew the pack into the mid-range and finally you can stick this one in and it becomes a light pack again so like i mentioned before trainer gallery cards are extremely difficult to account for they cannot be scouted because they will be hidden in the mid-range where you don't really want to open. Okay, so what would happen if you had a regular rare? If you had a non-foil rare and you add that, what would you expect to happen? So when you have a non-foil rare, they add the white code card. This becomes your weight and we have these two combinations, again, there's three variables. 
three variations. You have the non-foil plus reverse, which makes this a heavy pack, 22.61. Remember, that is considered heavy. This is a dud pack. What if you had Trainer Gallery? Textured, 22.64. That's rather heavy. Uh, but then what would happen if you have the Trainer Gallery non-textured? It pushes it up even further, 22.64. Seven one. So this is why the trainer galleried non-textured packs weigh the heaviest is because it's the white code card on top of this, which is the heaviest card type out there. So if you're into collecting these, I suppose you can open the heaviest packs, but you can a hundred percent be certain that it contains a non-foil because this is. This is the combination, the white code card. As always, I like to document the numbers, plug them into Excel, and build a model to figure out how things work. So let's review. The white border code cards weigh 1.6 grams on average. They do range fluctuate a little bit from time to time as indicated on this column. But overall, the average is what we want to look at. Black border code cards, 1.24 to 1.25. Reverse hollows, 1.95 with a little bit of fluctuations. VMAX and V stars are very similar, but they do have a larger range of fluctuation. I think the V stars do weigh heavier than VMAX, but only by a little. If you look at all the ultra rare V cards, they are all consistently two grams or a little bit even higher. They do have a big difference if when you compare them to the On average, hollows and alt arts and full arts, they all weigh the same. So you can expect anything that weighs within this range to be basically the same thing. 1.95. It's a little bit strange, but that's how it works. The Cynthia full art that I pulled was 1.95. So it weighs the same as a regular holo, and you can assume the alt arts as well as any textured card is within the same range. Next up, we have the non hollows, which is a regular, boring, common, uncommon. They weigh 1.82 to 1.83, and they do weigh the same as a V star marker as well as a regular energy card. So all of those. You can basically treat them as the same type of card. The wrapper, I know on video I had two different ones, but for the most part, they are 0.73 grams. And finally, the trainer gallery, where, for example, Vaporeon, Jolteon, Dust Noir, all of those are what I call the trainer gallery smooth cards with no texture, and they weigh 2.05 grams. And out of all of these cards, these weigh the heaviest. And I'll explain why that's important. But the main main factor that makes this weighable is because the white versus black code card has a weight differential of 0.36. When you take the difference between this one and this one, you get this number. And because there's such a large difference, it makes the pack weights have a huge variance. And you can easily distinguish what is a light pack versus a heavy pack. So as I've done before, we reverse engineered everything, taking a baseline of five commons plus four additional non-foil cards. We get this number. You add wrapper, and depending on the type of card it is, you add either white border code or you add a black one. And these are your two different types of variations. And depending on what type of card is inside, whether it's a hollow or it's non-hollow, then you would add the appropriate black or white code um, as well as the, the weight from this side. So basically, we added everything as we shown before, and this is what you get. Light packs usually contain a black bordered um, code card, and the white code cards are the heavy packs. And with pretty much 100% certainty, the heaviest pack will always contain a white code card in addition to the trainer gallery smooth type of card. 
So you will always guarantee to hit those because this combination yields the heaviest pack out of, out of the bunch. You will always get a rare and a trainer gallery smooth, but you will not get the other kind, the more expensive kind, the textured kind, you will not get in the most heavy pack. So if you're into that, go for it. And finally, the V, again, you look at the different uh, variations. It can, the double, the double hit packs can be falling into the mid-range, as you can see. Uh, I also had that experience when I was opening my box, when I hit a trainer gallery and something else in the same pack. So it can happen. So in conclusion, if you are opening a booster box, you can definitely weigh your packs to find which ones contain the hits. Most of the money cards are lying in the rare spot, which are hidden in the light packs. Those being hollows uh, or better, full arts, alternate arts, secret rares, they all lie with the light packs because the math checks out. And if the Pokemon company really wanted to fix this, they can because in the past, in the Sun and Moon era, the green versus white code card differential wasn't 0.35, it was 0.15. And 0.15 is the sweet spot. It basically cancels out the difference between a hollow versus non-hollow card. And that's the whole point of having a code card, is to make it unweighable. But unfortunately, the Pokemon company, or the printing companies, who knows who what who is responsible for messing this up, but here we are. In the sword and shield era we're back to having weighing problems and people can now accurately weigh and find the hits so like i said before this is going to be a rampant problem and knowledge is power you don't want to be opening random loose packs and buying them off of sellers no matter who they are ebay tcg player if people know what they're doing they're going to be selling you their worthless junk packs and Brilliant Stars is a little bit better than, you know, Evolving Skies and Chilling Rain because it has the trainer galleries, which can potentially still give you a hit. But you are definitely not going to get a secret rare. You're not going to get an alternate art or full art because if they did it correctly, they would have sold you the heavy packs. So knowledge is power. You know, this is why I do what I do to stay informed teach the community and learn something so i hope everyone learns something like this video share subscribe let me know what you think in the comments below and i'll catch you guys next time